and to call the necessary variables, uh, we will be calling the variables uh, using the var function. And uh, we also had a glance at how you will be giving it. You can call in by, uh, you can activate the CSS by uh, class name, or you can directly assign it to a tag, or also we had seen, uh, we can assign the, uh, assign the CSS with the IDs as well. Okay, so <clears throat> but yesterday, whatever we did, we had a common problem. That is that we had to write a lot of codes. Okay? And uh, then coming back, and then we have to test it. We, will, we were saying that it was broke, breaking here and there. Day before yesterday, we also saw that we had to create everything from our, from the scratch. Okay, we had to add all this information. We had to build this and that. So but today, what we are going to do is, uh, let's refer back to that same template that we were using. So today, let's see how a framework will make our life easier. So um, let us get started. Okay. Before we jump off, do we have any questions for the sessions that we had conducted? Anybody wants to put up any questions? I take that as a no. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so today, what we are doing is we are creating uh, a same template. We are creating the same template using Bootstrap framework. Okay. Same process. First, create a HTML file. I use the reuse the same CSS and the images folder. Now we will go down to Bootstrap.com. Okay, get Bootstrap.com. This is the site. Get Bootstrap.com. All of you must be aware of it. Still, we'll share it. So there have been lots of versions of uh, Bootstrap, starting from Bootstrap 2 and now going down to latest is 5.3. So we will be looking into 5.3. Till uh, Bootstrap 2 and 3, the classes or the format was the same. right? From Bootstrap 4 onwards, everything has changed a lot. So yesterday, we had seen something called a flex. We were working with something called flex. Prior to flex, we used to use something called float. So 3 and 2 are dependent on float method. So they typically use float left and float right to position objects. Okay. So for example, let's take if this was the bar. So I would have uh, used a float left over here to move it on the left and a float right to move it to the extreme right. Okay, But with the flex stepping in, it has made the process much easier. And browser compatibility is also improved. So now we don't have to use the float. Instead, we will say display block and justify content between. So this will come this side, and this will come that area to the extreme right, like what we had seen yesterday. So we will be looking into the latest one. Uh, we let us study the Bootstrap 5. Okay? So once you come down to the site, you will be greeted with all those things, everything over here. We can do an NPM install for the Bootstrap, or you can directly go and include the CDN links as well. Okay? So whichever way, depending upon the requirement of the project, we will be choosing our stuff. So, <clears throat> Next is uh, Bootstrap also offers something called SAS. Okay, so for SAS for the training, you can refer to already conducted trainings that are available in 25. So if you want to learn more about SAS, the so SAS is basically a CSS preprocessors. Uh, so yesterday you had a glimpse of it where we have seen that how we created variables. Okay, uh, so yesterday we saw creating variables. Okay. So this is a CSS variable, so, but CSS itself doesn't have the power of doing a programming stuff. Okay? So there are limited functions over here. We can perform very few numbers of functions like var, cal, and all those things. So CSS preprocessor like SAS or less or stylus, this helps us to create uh, our own functions, just like uh, you created in your .NET platform or on a JavaScript or a React platform, we can create our own functions and we can uh, we can pass in ifs and if and else and do loops over there and ultimately we can insert those in our uh, everyday CSS. 
so in case your project is heading for a css or a other any other uh, pre processes that point of time you can refer to the bootstrap sas sections so like what we had seen yesterday css uh, bootstrap also gives us the options to use the css variables over here so now by now you will be familiar with seeing this so you will understand this is css variables then there are a lot of other components that are available which can be plugged and played and customized further for our project needs okay, okay let us uh, jump into okay another uh, stuff is now CSS, uh, now bootstrap has omitted the dependency on jquery previously till bootstrap 3 we had the dependency of uh, jquery with us but bootstrap 4 onwards and 5 they have removed the dependency on jquery now everything is in javascript based okay so there are lots of uh, components that are available like alert button carousal collapse etc by which we can do it we can and we do have a lot of icon presets that are also available with us okay which are called named as bootstrap icons however we are also free to choose any other icon library like such as material icons or ico moons or any kind of an other third party icon library also we can build our own icon design systems and we can have them integrated in the so there are a uh, few themes are, that are also available for you are uh, on the uh, free versions and most of uh, others are like paid if you are if you actually want to choose any particular theme okay let's get started so on the top you have the docs examples icons themes exact uh, etc so before we jump on let us just quickly check one or two examples okay so over here, if you see, we have headers, we have hero banners, we have features, everything laid out over here. So you see the navigations bars are already created. It's just plug and play. You have to simply copy the necessary code and you have to paste it, okay? And our work would be done. And on top of this, from as per the design that you have received from the UX team, you can do the further modifications to, uh, to make it look as if, uh, exactly as per our uh, designs okay so why we are using then bootstrap so this will help us to speed up the process okay so the same way like we are using other libraries uh, it is also doing the same stuff oh, sorry so inside the example if you see you have a lot of stuff so you have the sidebar you have how the footers how the drop downs will behave everything so they have given you an examples out here so this is uh, it's showing how the sidebars can be made okay so all those things are there okay let's get started so once you click on the docs uh, so here you will be getting all the information like what is there in the bootstrap so they will give you the instruction just create a new html file and then include this set over here okay so for now what we have done is we have created a blank index file simply copy it from here paste it it let us run our stuff uh working today on bootstrap okay so we get our hello world coming in now it is saying like uh, what do you have to do now we include your css and the js in the necessary head so you can take this example or what i will do is i'll take this Come on from here and paste it. What we have, we have the script. We will be requiring the bootstrap JS file as well. Okay. Right now, you won't be able to see anything. We have just uh, called in the JS and the CSS. However, the CSS did apply and it has changed uh, the font styling. Okay. Why did the font style change? Let's investigate. Because it, we are using a H1. Okay. The moment you are using an H1 or H2, anything, any tags that you are using, the library already has them defined. So inside the bootstrap CDN file, we already have how an H1 will 
behave, what will be the font size automatically, the font size has changed out here. Next, uh, let's go down. Now, there is something also called, the called as uh, popper.js, OK? Now, popper.js is required when you are using the components with it. Previously, in, in Bootstrap 3, on 3, till 3 at least, what we used to see is that we used to be provided only one Bootstrap JS file, OK? And in that Bootstrap JS file, everything, the components that were there, those uh, informations were also integrated into the JS file, which was always not being used, OK? So what they have done is they have split it into two halves. One is the JS file, which is absolutely necessary for the required bootstrap uh, components to work. And uh, another one is the popper.js, which are uh, which uh, for are for specific components which are dependent on the proper. So in case you are using those components inside it, then you can use it. Okay. So now, how will you say you you need to understand like where uh, which are the components that I should be using for proper JS? That that is also written. Okay, we will look into it. Okay, so for now, let us use this popper as well because we would be using accordions and uh, carousels, all those things. So which would be defining a proper JS? Okay. Um, for a quick reading, now uh, what we have done is we have integrated all of these. So now this is the information where you will be getting it. Okay. So when you are using the popper or the JS, what are these stuffs that are needed? So if you're using a drop down, you would be needing a popper. If you are using a tooltip and popovers for this, you will also be needing the popper. So here are the list of all the such <clears throat> all the components that would be dependent okay next uh, they have uh, explained what they are doing we are they are using an html5 doc type that we have already learned we have also seen this okay uh, how to use a uh, language stuff so this is the metadata responsive tag that we had already seen next is the box sizing how uh, this is for the css part uh, so how if you want to learn more about box sizing, you can go to the csstrixen.com uh, and learn more about it. It's more about uh, how your contents would be like wrapped around inside a box area. Next is uh, ticket. Nothing much. Now, what this is a uh, process that we just showed is like getting it linked from the CDN. Okay, if you want to have it installed, then also you can do it. Okay. You can download the entire Bootstrap more package and have it integrated in your project as well. But uh, it's always recommended that we go in for the CDN link because that helps us for an easy upgrade. So tomorrow, if you are having a version, new version coming in 5.4, so we can simply have it uh, move to the 5.4 and work on it. So those are the examples. OK, so we can also have it with the package manager. We can have an NPM install for the bootstrap if you are using an Angular framework or a React framework, whichever you are using. <clears throat> Sorry, for React, they will be having something else that is called a React bootstrap. With the React, you cannot directly just come and say NPM install. You have to use NPM uh, installed React hyphen bootstrap. OK. Now, if you're downloading the stuff, sir, actually, let's download one and show you. So when you are downloading, you will get the CSS. So it will have all the bootstrap CSS that are needed. Now, over here, it's not necessary that you include all of them. OK, so like this is this is the main one, bootstrap CSS and the map.css. So what is map? Map is like when you are using a SAS file and you are creating all those variables and functions. So this map helps to keep us on a record or an indexing of the stuff. 
So during debug, it is very helpful. When you're doing an inspect element with uh, when you're use, typically using a SAS, at that point of time, we compile it into a single CSS file. So it's a minified version file. So you will not, it's very hard to debug. So this map will give you the exact stuff like where it is. So for example, to understand it better, what we are seeing. So for example, right now you see this is we I am calling in a CSS file over here, okay. But it is showing me that uh, this particular h1 command has been written in underscore rfs.scss file at line number 305. Okay. Now this is happening because of that map. Because that map is associated with the CSS for this reason. The, how do you generate the map when you are creating a CSS CSS file? There is a command by which we can also include the map with the output bundle. So that way, we it, it gives us the reference. Okay. Otherwise, it will become very difficult if we don't have the map to debug where exactly that uh, CSS has been written. Okay. Clear so far? Any doubts? Any questions, anyone? Okay. Now, for over here, when you are, if you are downloading and including this package inside this, or you are just uh, adding the CSS over there in your uh, project, so do a, a spend a time and looking for what you actually want. Okay, always go, go for the minified versions because this is the library file. We will not be modifying them. Plus, it's uh, not that you, you have the bootstrap CSS folder, so you just copy paste the entire folder, okay? Because there are a lot of other stuff which will not be needed for your application, right? If you are not using an RTL uh, setup, all of you are aware of RTL, right? What is RTL? Anyone? Okay, I take that as no. Uh, so RTL is right to left. Okay, so typically we have left to right in our stuff. But if you are working for some on an Arabic site or uh, Arabic based client, that point of time there would be requirement for RTL, right to left. So all the things, the scroll bars and all the contents would be read from right to left. So that point of time you need the RTL dot CSS from Bootstrap. Okay. So with RTL, you have to pass in some additional parameters over there by which you will be able to shift the elements from right to left. Then if you are using a grid system, there is something called grid system as well. And uh, I just come back to what is grid. Then reboot is the utilities. If you are using the utilities, that point of time, you will move in for the utility. So do a B. Uh, do a cherry pick over here on what exactly you are doing if you are not calling the CDN link. Now, for the JS file, uh, this uh, minified and the bundle maps are needed. And after that, if you are using the bootstrap ESM, if it's needed, then only you go for it. Okay. Again, for the JS file as well, please do a cherry pick on what you exactly need instead of just blindly copy pasting the entire JS folder. Now, coming back to the grid, what is a grid? So, there are two types of layout, uh, two types of display settings. Or rather, there are a lot of display settings. Primarily, what we use is display flex, and there is also called something called display grid. Okay. I just refer to the site once. So this is kind of a uh, will be a display grid. Okay, so what we can achieve with our display flex, the same thing we can also achieve with the display grid as well. Okay. But uh, it's just a two way of uh, writing the stuff. Okay. So with flex, uh, it is not possible to like uh, create a media query. Okay, when, when to make it responsive without a media query, you have to fall back for a media query. With the grid system in place, you can just uh, specify the number of grids and the breakpoints in, inside it and you can have it may make it work okay so like i am right now you are having this movement okay because we have said that this is like great over here if we pass a command saying 
uh, grid responses, then we can see how it will behave. So in a lower device, I want everything to be stacking one after the other. So without additional working on a media query, we can achieve this, okay? which typically display flex will not have. For display flex, you have to have an additional media query written, then only you can do it. Okay. Now, once we have downloaded, if you have downloaded, now let's move forward. So it has shown you what are the various uh, file contents that you will be having in. So let us jump to the important sections. Browser standard, what are the various layer browsers that are supported? So all, all those informations are over here. So when you're using Bootstrap 5, you have to look in for the browser compatibility. This are, these are the minimum requirements that you have to. So it's not supported for uh, I 11 or below in case there is a requirement from the client end that we have to provide support. OK. <clears throat> so with the JavaScript file, we already have, we have seen the JavaScript. Like if you're using it for the React, then it has to be a React Bootstrap. For view, it would be bootstrap view. For the Angular, it has to be an ng bootstrap. Okay. Uh, same way, we would be doing it for the JavaScript part. Let's uh, skip all those things. This is not needed. Uh, let us go to the breakpoints. So when you are creating a bootstrap, that point of time, understand bootstrap is made out of 12 grid columns. Okay, so Imagine this page, there will be 12 grids. Okay, so if I take a print screen of this. So typically, there, when we are designing stuff, there are 12 columns like this Okay, in our system. I'm not filling this up. Let me take this. So this is more for the designers. Okay, you don't have to worry. So when uh, the designers designs the system, that point of time they create a twelve grid column layout, and in that twelve grid column layout, we put which component would be there. Okay, all of you must have heard about this. Um, we are writing call MD three, call MD six, like this, right? So this means that it this particular stuff or particular component will be within the six column layout. So during when we are designing that point of time, what we do is we typically, for example, I want to keep a particular object over here. So one, two, three, four, we'll say this is within the four, mar uh, four column mark. So when a developer will be working, they will be definitely specifying this as call four, anything. It could be MD, XS, SM, whatever, but it would be also within the four. Okay. So uh, anyhow. Now, this is very important part that you should remember. That is the breakpoints. What are the available breakpoints? Okay. <clears throat> so there are something called XS, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, and XXL. Okay. So extra, extra large. Now, Bootstrap 5 on, or rather Bootstrap 4 onwards, they have introduced something that is called a uh, mobile first approach. Okay. Now, what is a mobile first approach? Does anyone have any idea about mobile first approach? Anyone? No? OK. Let us take yesterday's reference and uh, let us see over here. Mm. Quickly, I'm going back to the previous day's file. I'll just uh, take two, three minutes over here. For example, right now, this is not responsive, or rather, we have not written any responsive code, and this is happening like this. Okay. Simply, I'm just showing you one thing. I want to change this background color. So what we'll do is this. We had specify a background color on the navigation nav. So let us go down to D2, CSS, style. Navigation map here. Okay. What I want is when this will be previewed in mobile device, that point of time the background would be let's take green. Okay. And for desktop, it would be red. 
So typically we write it like this, navigation.nav, and then we write at the rate media screen and minimum width is like, for example, 1024. And that point of time, we want this to be as uh, we, sorry, this is not minimum. This would be maximum with 1023, and this would be green. Okay. So, this uh, other media screen that we specify is the way we write our media queries. So at the red media means what is the media that you are targeting? That is called screen. Screen means uh, mobile or the tap or desktops or tablets. And uh, we are building queries over here, and we are saying what is it? The maximum width is this one. We can also set in for, uh, further conditions. We can say, and uh, it was like minimum width was so and so. For example, let's check 220px, and max width was this, and orientation is this. Uh, like portrait or sorry this is, would be landscape so like this we can keep on building our parameters on whatever is supported okay so let's check we did this now if we save this and run this right now nothing happens but if we go to the mobile mode which is less than 1024 uh we just say responsive from here you see this is changing right So the moment it is increasing from 1023, at 1023 it is green, but the moment I am changing it to 1024, the color changes to red. Okay. So this is how the media is getting controlled. Any any doubt so far before we proceed? No? Okay. Now this is a typical example of how we used to do it previously. Okay. not a mobile first approach now for mobile first approach what we'll do is we will eliminate the need of media query in the mobile the mobile media query will be triggered from 1024 onwards now taking the same example i am commenting this entire piece and i will pasting this what i will say is i will say this is green green was for our mobile right and here I will say minimum width is like, for example, 1024, and it would be red. And if I reload, I don't see any difference happening. Okay, it is working the same, but difference happened over here in the code. You go and see. Now you see the navigation.nav is getting triggered with the background green inside the mobile, and there is no media query for it. Okay. The media query is coming from when it is getting into 1024 mode. Clear? Yeah. Why we did this? This is called a mobile first approach. We eliminate the need of media query inside a mobile. Okay. This process is done too fast to make the loading fast of your CSS. Okay. So you will say that uh, nowadays we have the mobiles which are very fast. We have 8 GB RAM, all those things happening. Yes, but still, we want to have it optimized. When we are creating CSS, we want to optimize each and every single byte that we can save. Right. So for this, we are doing this particular process. So again, iterating once more. When I let me write comments also. This will. Okay. Any doubts so far? How do we have a clear understanding of what is a mobile first approach? Yes, no. Yes, Tomajit. Okay. Great. Thank you. 
So coming back to the bootstrap, so now you see they have said for extra small, they have specified no CSS classes. That means by default, it is a mobile first approach. Okay. Now, after this, if you're writing us uh, targeting a small device, which is greater than equal to 576, then the target would be SM. For the medium, it would be greater than equal to 768 and so on and so forth. We have this breakpoint. Always refer to this breakpoint uh, stuff in case you are forgetting which class you want to apply where. If you're using a SaaS platform, they also give you the flexibility to modify the variables that we have in uh, SaaS, and we can modify the values as well, in, in case you are wanting to create some of, uh, of your custom breakpoints. Okay. Uh, okay, don't go into so much details. Now let's uh, go down to the container. So when we are creating a bootstrap layout, that point of time, we have we use something called a container. This is an outer shell. Okay. So in this outer shell, we can define like what is our width. Width, uh, width would be like uh, so. Here we have not defined any width, so this is a hundred percent width flexible that we have made. If we want, we can make it like a fixed value or all those things. So everything we can specify. If we can say container, then if we are saying a container, then it would be a lock. But if you want it to be a fluid, you have to just say container fluid. Or you can make a combination also, like container would be fluid for this particular breakpoint, but it will become fixed for this particular breakpoint. Okay. So over here you have all the charts of details. So it's showing you like if you are saying a container fluid, it will always be hundred percent. But if you say like container XXL, that point of time till this breakpoint, it would be hundred percent. But uh, greater than fourteen hundred, it will become a uh, have a fixed width of 1320. So similarly, all those breakpoints are given. And if you are saying a call empty, it would be 100% for extra small and small, but for the medium, it would be having a fixed width command. Okay. So this way you can give in. So I will see it in action. Just let's go down, uh, go with the documentation first. Similarly, we have the grid system. So like what we explained in the grid. So Bootstrap follows a typically 12 column grid system. So we will be defining, say, container, and inside the container, there has to be something called a row. And then inside the row, you put your columns. Okay. So this is a typical structure. First is the container, then is the row. This is the entire row. Uh, should we explain it better? Just take a print screen. What we are saying is, so this is my container shell. This is my container. Hello. Team, am I audible? I think there was an internet lag. Yes. Yes. Sir. OK, thank you. So this is my row, and these are self-explanatory. These are our columns. Okay. So this is our structure. So this would be your container. This is your row, the entire stuff, and this is your column. Again, if you want to have another one, you will be breaking it down like this. Okay, uh, same way. So we have the grid options where you want to do the breakings. You can define extra, small, small, all those things. Now let us go to the columns. The same layout what we discussed, that is for the grid system. This is for the display flex system, okay? With uh, this, you have various options. If you want to align it vertically, align top, middle, bottom, with the uh, various arrangements where if you want to have it start and all those things are there this documentation is always handy you have to keep it handy because when you are writing after few writing a uh, few times of writing you will be able to memorize the classes but initial time you need to refer okay so when you are doing a justify content this is just justify content start this is justify content center this is justify content end this is justify content uh, space between so all those uh, justify content even evenly. So this is like evenly we are doing it. Next uh, is like column wrap. If you want to do a column wraps and all those things will come in. 
okay next there is something called gutter what is the gutter gutter is the space between two columns okay this white space that you are creating that is called your gutter so it is typically defined with a g and x x means the x column okay so gx means gutter for x and then there are various classes five is the maximum one is the minimum and five is the maximum so there are various parameters that are there so depending on the your uh, necessary parameters you can say you can one would be closer two would be a bit far and five is the furthest okay that way we can keep on modifying p is for padding okay. m will be for margin p for padding g for gutter like this now there are some utility classes uh, utility classes are like uh, margin padding toggle visibility these are uh, which will be needed as you are working we will be able to see it okay z index yesterday i believe we discussed z index okay so z uh, here we have some z index uh, that they have defined in for various uh, components that you are using like drop down or sticky or the fix so for them they have that uh, z index particularly what is the number of the z index so in case you are using a sas uh, platform you can definitely modify those variables or the values in case you are using a css that is all that point of time also it is possible we have to identify the class and increase the z index value okay uh, let us jump into uh, let us now start building something okay because we already uh, near to the time so now we have this hello world let us remove this let us get refer back to this so first we need a container so we'll say div class container okay you can say container container fluid whatever you would like now let's get a navigation system what we'll do is you go to the components okay inside the components go to the nav bar and you have the navigation bar so you have the various uh, variations of the navigation bar you can choose it from here you can choose it from the examples as well okay whichever one you want so there are various uh, examples that are available how do you want which suits you the most okay whichever one you want so what we want is how is our design we have logo navigation and search let's take do we have something of an option like that uh, starting point we had logo navigation and search let us copy this we copied this pasted the dotnet platform or angular react platform we have the capability where we can do it uh, as a component wise so we can create a component called nav and we can paste it so the html will not be lengthy but right now we are not going into all those things we are all those things are all known by you all oh, where is my stuff boost training bootstrap navbar is here drop down is working simply this navbar we have to convert this into a logo where is the navbar written the img src images dummy logo it was right provide an all and you close it why is it uh, uh, okay let's uh, do a quick quiz can anybody tell me why is it saying screen red quickly anyone have we written any wrong command over here no okay i'll tell you why this is happening because you see this this is an anchor tag right yesterday we discussed something about accessibility day before yesterday also i mentioned accessibility right so for this when you have created a anchor tag an anchor tag that point of time it needs a text element to read the screen reader needs to read it okay but inside the anchor tag we have used an image which does not convey any meaning so that's why it is asking either you given some title over here let's see that moment we said let's take a dummy logo okay 
the moment you are saying dummy logo that point of time the screen reader will understand that this anchor tag will be represent or spelled out or pronounced as dummy logo anchor the dummy logo link okay like this else if you don't have an alt tag also you can do is you can pass in something called title and you can say dummy logo okay and if i do a reload but with title it will also show you but if that is not as per the requirement then instead of this you say aria label okay and this point of time you, when you are hovering on it nothing will come but for the screen reader the content is already there they will be able to read it out you see this is aria label and if you go down to accessibility tab over here it will show you what is it it is show you that this is a link and it is a it will be read out as link okay with the dummy logo as your aria attribute clear so far any doubts okay uh okay so here i will say ing fluid why did i say ing fluid because i want to keep it flex, uh, always wrapped within whatever column we are giving in okay right now we have not specified any column over here but if you want i can give up column as well i can say call four for example just so that you can understand it's happening actually can you see that it's shrinking with that image ing fluid what is it uh, doing is it's creating yesterday we had sh uh, shown you this we had written something called a with uh, auto and max with 100% if you all remember okay so with this what will happen it will always be wrapped within this particular anchor tag uh, or particular column it will not overshoot the column even if the width is uh, larger yesterday we also had something called a mantle kind of a file i think over here there was something called mantle dot jpeg even if the mantle dot jpeg see the mantle dot jpeg file is so huge it is around 5121 by 3525 okay but even that is getting wrapped out wrapped within this particular element because it's this img fluid if you don't have this then you see the output what happens okay now it will overshoot the column boundary because it is getting its native width but with the class img fluid it will always wrap it within the parent container so if you want to increase this you have to increase the parent container the parent container increase the images increase okay so don't physically increase the image always refer to the parent container to do the changes yes so far any doubts no okay now we have uh, created an app let's make a carousal inside this okay so now let us see this one okay carousal first carousal second carousal there are variations over here you can quickly jump from the for the variations i want an auto playing carousal if you want an auto playing one choose this okay if you want uh, with controls without controls all the variations are there uh, for now we just copy one and let's collapse this i say this is a header tag and inside the header tag let me wrap it around okay images are not coming in we have to put in some images of ours over here i say let's take let's see images mantle let us quickly get two more pictures This is a vertical one. I don't want a vertical one. That is the square hole.
Okay, it's working. Moving automatically as well. Okay, <clears throat> so all those things, like uh, you will say, it's not looking exactly. So all those dimension, etc., has to be proper, and all those things we are not working on them for now. Okay, so this is done with my header, and now I want this. So, for example, this particular stuff, you see, this is outside, the, this is in the full width. Okay, so what I can do is I will end the container over here and create another new container, saying container, and we'll say container as fluid. Okay, because this will be that gray area container. I will say this is, for example, our service. Yes. And I can mention this as a section. Our service will go down to the CSS. Let us bring our CSS as well. And where is our CSS? If we had the variables, for example, I take the secondary. Okay. And now what we'll do is we will create another because this you see is in a fixed width. Okay. So inside this section, now you create another div class, and this will be container. And inside this container, now you have four columns, one, two, three, four, OK? So let us go down to Bootstrap and see the column structure. Okay. So let's refer to the columns. Where was the column? Here. So this is the column I want, OK? So let's copy this. Uh, we need another column over here. Let me change the color ones. Sorry, I changed in the wrong file. Doing it in a wrong file or what? Uh, maybe a secondary. Let's quickly refer. Just give me a moment. Yeah, bootstrap classes, variable. Uh... Okay, let's not uh, spend time on that. Anyhow, so this is our column that is going to change. Let me add in some text, more text over there. These could be your heading tags, all those things. I'm not getting into those details. Let's get some lips on it.
here. Okay, it was caching or something like that. Now it has come in. So if you want to give in some gap over here, you can use the prefix classes that are there. You go to utilities files, or you can do a searching. For example, you want to give some margin and padding. What you want to just search in for margin and padding, and they will give you what are the classes that are available. Okay. So M is for margin, P is for padding, T is for top, B for bottom, S for start and end this way. Okay. So how to use it? For example, I want to give in some margin over here. So what I will do is I will say margin top, okay? So MT and then a number one to five. I have said, let's say for example, I give two and I reload. You see the gap comes in. Now you say, how do I identify? So if from the UX team, when you are receiving that mock-up there, you will be getting the specific number. And accordingly, you can see, okay? Generally what we do is when we are designing, we follow this particular uh, unit. So for example, one will be this much Two will be this much, this kind of a margin. So we, we mentioned. So let me just quickly check. And the system has been slow. I will say margin five. So margin five uh, means 48 pixel. Okay. So in case your design is at uh, 24 pixel, you will say margin two or three, it would be. Or four rather. Okay. 24 pixel. So this kind of an information, we will get it from the XD. Now, over here, if you want to give in some padding, what I will do is I can say padding. So for example, we'll say padding, and I want padding from every side, OK? So it will just say P3. So that would be global. So it would be padded from all the areas. Can you see? Now, but if you want uh, to be from the specific, uh, so for example, I say padding X. So from X, I want 5. The five padding has been applied. OK. So padding of 5px is getting applied. Let's remove that, this one. We will be able to understand better. This happened for only one row. Uh, let me do it for the column so that you can understand better. Let's move this class over here. So this is happening. Uh, OK, now the same way. Let's get back. Uh, other components, let's look into. If I want to add an accordion, simply come down. You have the options, variations, copy. Within this section, if you want to paste, OK, you want to create a new section. As per the requirement, do it. Reload. And you have your accordion, right? Now it is stretching. If you don't want it to be stretched, it, it could be wrapped within a particular column. All those things can be done. Any doubts so far? So I'm not going into each and every component. There are lots of components. We can play around with all of them. Okay. Now let's go to utility classes that are there. If you want, uh, you're creating something and you want to have the background, simply you can copy this class name and you can apply. So for example, let us do it for this one. I'll say this one will be BD primary. If I do a reload, see this changes into background primary. Okay, uh, Ignore the color contrast now. We'll have to pass a color. Uh, yeah, that is not there. Like uh, if you're passing a BG secondary, so automatically the foreground color will also change that flexibility they have not given us. Such. So these are the various stylings of all the backgrounds that are available. Whichever you want, you can just, yes, somebody raise their hand, please. Unmute. Hello, somebody wants to say something? OK. Dropping out of the call. No problem. Uh, OK. Clear. So next, you have various borders and colors that are available. All those stylings, anything you can. This you have to like play around yourself to and have a deep, deep knowledge of this. Various uh, colors of backgrounds and the foreground colors all are available over here. Next, uh, what you want? Main thing that I want to show you is when you are creating these columns. Okay. Uh, this is very important. Uh, what do you want to do? For example, you want them to be aligned uh, aligned to the center. So the row, this this has to be very carefully done because the row 
align center command align or justify commands works only with deflex and deflex in the same level so row this particular class row has that uh, class deflex assigned to it okay so if i uh, let's do it in r1 so if you check this out this row has this command deflex okay this column doesn't have the deflex command so if you are using if you are using an align item center or something else over here it will not work so if you have to work it with the deflex uh, either with the row or you have to pass in a class called deflex itself okay and then work on it so plus with the row it comes with some additional margins and all those settings so margin minus 12 minus 12 will be applied to it so as per your requirement if you want to apply a row but remember row within a row will create a problem problem in sense that uh, UI layout might break, you might see stuff getting overflown because of extra margin minus getting added to it. Okay, so if I want to change this to align item and I will say N, and let's see the result, everything would be aligned to the bottom. You won't be getting to see, okay, all of them are stretched so far, so you won't be getting it. But anyhow, you can play around with uh, all these parameters and classes. And what else? Everything we have, pagination, off canvas menus, uh, sorry, off canvas menu, this is a good one. Uh, let's go down and see how that responsive behaves, OK? Now you see if when I'm going shrinking down, automatically this becomes a mobile burger menu okay so this is happening if you don't want this particular styling then you can opt for something called an off canvas okay so the off canvas menu example is like if i shrink this out okay so this is how the off canvas will work so in case you want this kind of a menu styling then you have to refer to the off canvas menu and now you see this are all wrapping up together if you want to wrap them then you have to pass in your necessary commands what you will say we have just said call 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 means uh, it will always be in the column wise we have not specified any breakpoints but as we saw in that one what we have to do is we have to say a mobile first approach and we say call and then call um, this could be call 12 in the normal state and for call md it will be four okay like this copy this and you see it breaks for the mobile in the mobile it is becoming vertically stacked but if we move up that point of time it will move to the left uh, i must have messed up something or to uh, oh, space sorry that's why it was not happening okay clear easy without writing any css of your own or any media query it is just doing it for us any doubts no doubts Fair enough then. Uh, so this brings us to the end of this uh, quick short training program that we conducted. So I will be sharing all this course materials and information uh, to the LND team so that they can share this further. If nothing else, then we will conclude the call today. Nothing? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining in. Thank you.